in spite of the suffering, in spite of the crucifixion, in spite of his death, you know, it's still called Good Friday because of what uh, was achieved. On the news tonight, Christians the world over mark Good Friday in commemoration of the crucifixion and death of Jesus Christ. You have to wait for the justice in the end to take its course. I think this imposes so much discipline on whoever wants to lead. I don't want trouble. I don't want trouble, especially when I live here. <laughs> President Buhari hosts justices of Supreme Court to the breaking of Ramadan fast. Mr. President has approved uh, additional funding for restocking our silos. We are currently restocking even as we are releasing. Federal government keeps pace with the United Nations recommendation on grain reserve. If you have registered in the past, you should not get involved in the CBR again, unless you have had problems with your PVC. Also tonight, a missed high number of invalid registrations, INEC chairman urges political parties to sensitize members on continuous voter registration. Hello and a warm welcome to NTA Network News. I am Jumai Yusuf. We are live in Abuja. Adiola Kame Akere is in Lagos and Suleiman Regachikun will be joining us from Kaduna. Thanks so much for joining us. The compassion attached to Good Friday is for Christians to reflect on the sacrifice Jesus Christ made and restrain from sin in appreciation. Some Christian faithful expressed this view as they join the Catholic Secretariat of Nigeria in marking Good Friday with pontifical ceremonies in Abuja. Joseph Osen reports. For Jesus Christ, who Christians believe is God, to transform himself into human, just to go through so much pain for the salvation of the world, processing and saying prayers under the rain is one of the least sacrifices this Catholic faithful say they will undergo in appreciation. In spite of the suffering, in spite of the crucifixion, in spite of his death, you know, it's still called Good Friday because of what uh, was achieved. For the Christian faith, the death of Jesus Christ is the highest level of sacrifice and humility which anyone can emulate in dealing with others, no matter the level. If you take the passion of Christ from Christianity, there will be no Christian because there will be no salvation. We should put ourselves in his position and be ready to also carry our cross and journey along with him. Fasting from sin, you know, fasting from telling lies, fasting from, uh, you know, oppressing people, fasting from stealing, fasting from committing all kinds of evil. That is really our call. With all that Jesus Christ has done for humanity, to the clergy here, the best any Christian can do to pay back is to abstain from sin, to live a holy life that Jesus will want them to live. In Abuja, Joseph Otsen, NTA News. And as Christians all around the world commemorate the crucifixion and death of Jesus Christ at the cross of Calvary, Christian faithful across the country have been urged to uphold the virtue of holiness, peace and tolerance and prayers for leaders and the country at large. Ola Bodearia compiled various messages from Good Friday services across the country. <laughs> As Nigerian Christians join their counterparts world over to commemorate the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, otherwise known as Good Friday, Yemi Dalibon reports that clergymen in Abeokuta have stressed the need for Nigerians to reflect on the sacrifices and love in Portacot. Yemi Basu reports that Christians turned out at worship centers to mark the day. Everything about Jesus' death and resurrection is talking about God's love. In Kefi, Ngusia Peva reports that Reverend Father Francis Abu or the Saint Joseph Kwasi Parish also urges Christians to imbibe the spirit of sacrifice and love exemplified by the suffering and death of Jesus Christ. And in Uyo, Susan Asukwa reports that Governor Udom Emmanuel was among worshippers at the Kwa Ibo Church, Abak Road. 
from the Good Friday service. Let's just have a lot of people to pray. But to you have to pray since the way time part so that God will unveil what he has for Nigeria. And in the NCT, Deborah Micah reports that Christians converge in the solemn atmosphere. And also in Abuja, Omenka Marachuku visited some worship centers within the metropolis. History, humanity are still celebrating today because Jesus died. He rescued us. And in Meduguri, Jadua Jasini reports that Christian faithful also mark the day with churches in full capacity. In Emboi, China Sajon reports that upholding the virtues of holiness, peace and tolerance for the unity of the country was the focus of messages of the clergy in their sermons. Good Friday is a Christian holiday commemorating the crucifixion of Jesus Christ and his death at Calvary in Abuja, Olabodarewa, NTA News. And in the spirit of Christmas Easter, President Muhammad Buhari is felicitating with the Christian community in Nigeria on the occasion of Easter. The president says he joins Christian brothers and sisters to celebrate this year's Easter, which he describes as the most significant event, event in the Christian calendar. According to him, the message of Easter, which commemorates the resurrection of Jesus Christ after crucifixion and burial, should remind adherents of the power of divine love, faith, and redemption. President Buhari said Easter should therefore evoke in Nigerians the resilience of the human spirit not to give up in the face of seemingly daunting challenges of life. He expressed optimism and hope that this period will embolden Nigerians to believe that the current spate of uncertainty and insecurity in the country will soon unfold a season of triumph over good, over good, over evil, hope over despair and light over darkness. The message urges Nigerians to increase love for one another rather than hate and show more patriotism as Nigeria is the only country that we have. The president wish all those celebrating the Christian festival and indeed all Nigerians a joyful and blessed Easter. Now, humility is at the heart of various Easter messages commemorating the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ with a call from Nigerians to pray for peace and unity. The report. In an Easter message, the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, on behalf of the Federal Executive Council, describes the sacrifice of Jesus Christ as the manifestation of God's love for mankind, which has brought liberation, hope, and a secure future for the human race. While reminding citizens to use the Easter season to pray for peace and unity among all ethnic nationalities, the President of the Senate, Ahmed Lawan, in his message of felicitation, notes that Easter marks the trial, sacrifice, victory and completion of the divine mandate of the author of the Christian faith and urges Nigerians to keep in mind the significance of the season, which he describes as the perfect demonstration of sacrificial love to others. In his Easter message, addressed to all Nigerians and titled, Hope, in the midst of gloom, Nigeria will rise again. The President, Christian Association of Nigeria, Reverend Samson Olasupo Ayokunle, prays for Nigeria's resurrection from all her pains and challenges so that those who have suffered will eat the good of the nation. The Corps Marshal Federal Road Safety Corps felicitates with all Nigerians and Christians, calling on all motorists to ensure full compliance with all road traffic laws, saying, safety on the roads will guarantee a happy Easter. Determined to ensure a crime-free Easter celebration, the Inspector General of Police Usman al Khalibaba has ordered intensive security patrols of all public spaces and critical national assets across the country. In a statement, Acting Force Public Relations Officer Miwa Adejobi says all state commissioners of police and their supervising assistants, Inspectors General of Police, have been directed to provide adequate deployment of police personnel and operational assets to areas 
areas of security interests within their respective areas of responsibility. The IGP has equally ordered supervising officers to ensure confidence boosting, proactive and high visibility patrols along the highways, motor parks, train stations, airports, worship centers, recreation centers, banks and other financial institutions while taking adequate measures to provide a peaceful, crime-free and enabling environment for religious, cultural and other socio-economic activities to thrive. While facilitating with Nigerians on the commemoration of the crucifixion, death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, the IGP appreciates the citizens' ray for their support and calls for continuous cooperation with the Nigerian police and other security agencies by providing timely information that will help in the prevention and detection of crime. President Muhammadu Buhari says his administration will continue to accord the nation's judiciary the desired support, respect and independence to discharge its constitutional duties in the greater interest of the nation. The president said this while hosting justices of the Supreme Court to the breaking of the Ramadan fast. State House correspondent Adam Musambu reports that the annual ritual is aimed at sharing the blessings of the holy month as well as promote harmony and mutual understanding between the executive and the judicial arms of government. I assure you that um, I have tremendous respect for your institution because um, it imposes so much discipline, not only on you, but on, on us who are supposed to appear before you from time to time. I found out that in this country, we cannot uh, do half step and jump. We have to go through the pains of development. You have to wait for the justice in the end to take its course. I think this imposes so much discipline on whoever wants to lead. I don't want trouble. <laughs> I don't want trouble, especially when I leave here. <laughs> Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Bram Tonku Muhammad, thanked the President for the unprecedented support to the nation's judiciary as well as maintaining a non-interference disposition in its activities. Let me make it abundantly clear for all to know that there was no single minute or moment where Mr. President, by himself or through any other person, attempted to talk in respect of any favor from the judiciary. I, for one, cannot recall one. If we can have those kind of leaders who do not interfere, particularly judicial decisions I think we can count ourselves as very lucky citizens of our country Mr. President we are grateful the CGN promised to sustain efforts at ensuring quick dispensation of justice by the nation's epic court we try to see that no case is delayed in our courts. No case whatsoever. It must be delivered within its own specific time or period which is given to it by the Constitution or any other statute. Still in the spirit of Ramadan, the Muslim community in Dakwa suburb of the federal capital territory has benefited from charity outreach in the spirit of Ramadan. Abu Bakr Akwanga reports that the gesture which put smiles on the faces of widows and orphans was carried out by Qatari charity organization. 
Awa Abdullahi is one of the many beneficiaries who went home with a pack of food and date. I feel so excited. The joy in me, I can't explain it. Just want to say thank you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them with the everything they want, replenish their pocket with what they have given to us. Like Awa, other widows and orphans felt the warmth of their charity in their heart at a time when devotion requires strength. I pray to God very well. God will protect them all the things that they do for people. I'm very, very happy. May Allah reward them. Qatari Charity is reaching out to more than 2 million needy across the world annually, with Nigeria as one of its stop gates. وهذه التوزيعات تقام بشكل سنوي في شهر رمضان المبارك كثير من اهل الخير والصلاح We are assisting the less privileged in the spirit of Ramadan and among these beneficiaries are Nigerians uh, To help each other in this holy month uh, in Ramadan as uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَإِنَّمَا كُلَّ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ أَخْرَى as the Ramadan fast progresses, the call for more arms to the less privileged like Awa Abdullahi echoes for scores of the fasting population to observe the religious act with ease. In Abuja, Abubakar Akwanga, NT News. Now, the people of Gombe Central Senatorial District might not have had it so good as Senator Mohamed Njumogoje continues to empower, especially the vulnerable ones, to get them out of poverty. Nafisa Umar Garba reports that the latest of the Senator's empowerment scheme is geared towards improving transportation system. The people of Gombe Central Senatorial District comprising Aku and Yemo to the local government area were still celebrating close to 2,000 youths, women and physically challenged, empowered by Senator Muhammad Andrew Mugoji when the lawmaker came up with another surprise package. This time, it is 1,000 brand new motorcycles and 500 kikena pep tricycles distributed free of charge to 1,500 people carefully selected from all the words across the senatorial district. Senator Andrew Mugoje is bent on getting rid of poverty in his constituency and he believes continuous empowerment and wealth creation can do the magic. They are given wholeheartedly by the single senator for the benefit of the youth, teaming youth, so that they will be empowered economically. These items are given out to each of these beneficiaries free of charge. As for the people of Gombe Central Senatorial District, especially the direct beneficiaries of the 1,500 Kikena Pape and motorcycles, sending Goji to the Senate remains the best decision they have ever made. I'm a farmer, but this motorcycle will assist me in sustaining my life. Recently, Senator Goji launched the Zero Hunger, shared 30,000 for 1,000 people. More of such poverty eradication packages by the Senator are said to have been lined up for execution in Persis. Nafisa Umar Garba, NTA News. To other matters now, one of the leading independent petroleum marketers in Nigeria, Salbas Oil and Gas Limited, has taken the bull by the horn in providing another mega fuel station in Kano State. Kano State. Mohamed Ali reports that the idea is to sell the product at government approved price of 165 naira per litre and meet the need of consumers. Kano Mega Station, located along the busy Kofro Fonfo Road in the ancient city of Kano. The aim is to provide excellent service to the inhabitants of the state and motorists plying Kasana, Zamfara, Sokoto and Kebi states. It is the 10th station owned by Selbus in Kano state to meet the need of consumers and improve its equity share. The petrol station with the state-of-the-art facilities has 20 pumps for PMS, 2 diesel pumps, mini-mart, saloon, restaurant, business center, Standard Loot Bay, among others. Thinking about first scarcity in Kano, Salvas Oil has really helped to see that um, that issue has been squashed within the uh, metropolitan and even people that are, that are outside the city usually come into town to get fuel from Salvas Oil. So Salvas is really doing a very good job in Kano uh, State. Surely we can call it as an efficient way of uh, delivering the services uh, considering the way you see how effective 
relatively the staff you know and the management make arrangement even in the fuel scarcity the salvas is the one who fuel us at uh, government price the mega station which was inaugurated barely a week is on test running the chief chairman of Salvas Oil and Gas responded to the request of customers to build a station in Kofan Fanko to um, because of its um, consistent availability of products and excellent customer service and will run for 24 hours. The good news for the esteemed customers of Salvas Oil and Gas is that there will be no worry as services across that two stations are now readily available with PMS nationwide. Muhammad Ali. News. Time for our first break. Do stay. Thanks for rejoining us. Enhanced efforts at identifying the root cause of security challenges facing the country with multi-dimensional solution approaches have been preferred, preferred by the Chief of the Army Staff. National Assembly Correspondent Dayo Ogunshala reports that the Army Chief gave this line of thought at an interactive session with Senate Committee on Army. I also want to appeal to the press. This security matter is all our business. We expect that you report what will contribute or not what will create anxiety in our society. That prelude by Senator Indume sets the tone for this peace-driven high-level engagement. He highlighted catalog of issues that made the meeting imperative. After an overview of the security situations across the six geopolitical zones, the Army Chief effective. explained that the service is being stretched far more than any time in the history. Nigerian Army conduct expedient that enhanced effort be targeted at identifying and addressing the root causes of the various security challenges across the country. It is equally important for the government to sustain efforts at improving the manpower challenges and equipment shortfalls in the Nigerian army, while also improving the capacity. Rising from the closed-door meeting, the committee expressed satisfaction with the inputs from the army boss. The committee, knowing the human limitation and all that, uh, appreciate the effort of the Nigerian army and also the other security audiences that are working in collaboration uh, with them. But the best is not enough until the problem of insecurity that we are facing in the country is over. From the National Assembly, Dayo Gunshola, NTA News. Still talking security, the United States has approved the sale of weapons to Nigeria to enhance its internal security operations. Reuters reported that the U.S. State Department on Thursday approved the sale of attack helicopters worth $997 million to support its foreign policy goals and national security objectives by improving the security of a strategic partner in sub-Saharan Africa. Nigeria has been battling terrorism, banditry and all the violent criminalities for more than a decade. Leadership of the Nigeria Governors Forum has commiserated with the government and people of Kaduna State over the violent train and other sundry attacks by bandits in the state. Chairman of the Forum and Governor of Ekiti State, Dr. Kaede Fayemi, described the incidents as unfortunate, barbaric, and promised to strengthen collaboration with the federal government to surmount insecurity in the country at large. The Forum donated 50 million naira to support the victims and urged Governor Erufai to sustain efforts in delivering critical infrastructure as evident in different parts of the state. Governor Nasser Ahmed El Rufai appreciated the forum's support and says efforts are ongoing for the rescue of more victims. The attack, the train attack on the captivity of the bandits. There is a plan on ground to ensure speedy eradication of drug trafficking and abuse in the federal capital territory. Correspondent Abdul Malik Hassan tells us more. That's the first official visit of the FCT minister to the NDLEA since the agency had a new sheriff. With the visit comes a shocking revelation of the situation of drug trafficking in the country. In the first quarter of this year so far, we have arrested 3,359 suspects. We have sent it was a tabletop meeting which discussed how FCT make up 
10% of drug prevalence in Nigeria. Everybody has realized that nobody under your watch, no matter how highly placed, I will be allowed to go squat free and I think that has really sent a very strong message. Much was tendered during the meeting to include the establishment of the NDLEA barracks, rehabilitation centers and creation of FCT drug control committee that will checkmate illicit drug trafficking and drug abuse within the FCT. We would also suggest that this committee cascades down to the area councils, to the communities so that they take ownership themselves at the community level so every community knows where the drug joints are the sellers this type of thing the latter was the crowding of the minister as grand ambassador of war against drug abuse wada abdul malik hassan nta news the Nigerian Navy forward operating base Ibaka and Boa local government area of Aqua Ibom State has impounded a total of 300 bags of 50 kg suspected foreign parboiled rice within a week. Kelvin Samuel reports that the bags of rice have been handed over to the Joint Border Patrol team for further action. The officer forward operating base Ibaka, represented by the base operations officer Lieutenant Commander Samuel Oluwakere noted that the smugglers on sighting the Nava patrol team jumped into the creek and abandoned the boat containing 230 bags of 50 kg rice to escape arrest. As much as these criminals would not stop to operate in the waterways, we would also not stop to make sure that we catch up with them and arrest them and hand them over to uh, necessary prosecuting uh, agency. Do the, the rightful thing by taking the consignment to uh, Calabar uh, government warehouse where he warned all criminals operating in the area to stop the economic sabotage or be ready to face the law as his men are out to ensure adequate security of the waterways. Kelvin Samuel, NTA News. The show of food security. The federal government says it has stocked the country's silos with 90,000 metric tons of assorted food items. Now, this is based on the United Nations recommendation that countries should keep substantial amount of food in case of emergency. Musa Aliu has the report. Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations recommend that countries should store 12% of food that will at least last for three days in case of emergency. In this emergency could be war, flood, and other natural disasters. Nigeria has been abiding by this directive with 32 silos of different sizes established in 12 states. And also to, to stabilize prices and to push in the effect of hunger as a result of high cost of food commodities in the market. The government has kept about 90,000 metric tons of assorted food in the silos out of which 70,000 metric tons were released during the COVID-19 lockdown as directed by President Muhammad Buhari. It is from the available food items that 40,000 metric tons is being released for distribution to vulnerable Nigerians. We have about 90,000, we are releasing 40,000 and if and when another need arises, we will release again. As we speak, Mr. President has approved uh, additional funding for restocking our silos. We are currently restocking even as we are releasing. A total of 50,000 metric tons of food items are still available in the silos spread across the country with plans by the ministry to restock after this year's harvest. Musa Aliyu, NTA News. President Mahmoudou Buhari has expressed sadness over the flood disasters in KwaZulu Natal province of South Africa that has so far claimed 341 lives. Reacting to the calamity in a statement, the president said he is greatly shocked by the large scale natural disaster which has caused widespread sufferings and fatalities in South Africa. The disruption of water and electricity supply, as well as the destruction of homes, he noted, made the disaster one of the worst in recent times. While extending his sympathy to the government and people of South Africa, President Buhari urged other African leaders 
to work towards together towards developing common and effective strategies for improving our emergency management response system that will help us significantly reduce the human and economic impacts of national natural disasters and impending climate change. Next is Lagos and we're joining Adiola who has a set of stories on Network News tonight. Hello Adiola. Jumai. A book that chronicles the humble beginning into stardom of a man described by many as a goal getter and motivator has been launched in Lagos. The book titled The Road Never Forgets was authored by Yemi Ogumbiye. Annie Daniels reports that Nigeria's Vice President Yemi Oshibajo was the special guest at the event. Gathered in this hall are friends relatives and professional colleagues of Yemi Ogumbi who have come to rejoice with him as he clocks 75, as well as celebrate his many achievements in his chosen field of endeavor. It's truly outstanding career as a university teacher, as a journalist, as a publisher, and as what I would myself describe as a general consultant. And in doing that comes with the launch of a book, The Road Never Forgets. The 500-page book is divided into four parts, written in simple English with pictorial representations and talks about the author's memory of the past as a negation of the present for many reasons. I don't know the books to read almost academically. Especially among the educated class, those like you and me who have gone to school and earned the books, it's also a work of family love, a revelation of love within a family. That's why I call it a love story. And it does extend to embrace the community and embrace even those who should be muscle enemies. Nigeria's Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshibajo, extolled the distinct milestones of Yemi Ogumbi from his days as a journalist till date. For anyone who has read the book or who will, you will notice that all that Dr. Ogumbi wants to achieve in this book is to tell a story, not just of himself, but of our country. And it says that in this book, not only does he discharge that obligation, he has also shown that he is one who is capable of telling a story without embellishment. Yemi Ogumbi was born in the ancient city of Kanu by an Igbo mother to a Yoruba father from Ibararemo in today's Ogun State. In Lagos, Annie Daniels, NTA News. And from that book lunch for more than two drug abuse. The process of addressing the problem of unwholesome importation of substandard goods must start with strict adherence to internal regulations among major players along the value chain. Thus, key players say will not only control the proliferation of substandard goods in circulation, but check tactics adopted in circumverting the legitimate procedures introduced at the point of entry. This observation was brought to the fore by the regulatory body of substandard of standards at stakeholders meeting with maritime operators in Lagos, Abaladi Salami reports. With various methods, approaches and systems initiated by the regulatory body in charge of standards to discourage importation of an awesome products into the country. Majority of operators in the value chain have refused to desist from this unpatriotic act, thereby causing the nation huge financial losses. At the instance of correcting this trend, the regulatory body hosted maritime stakeholders to a meeting where issues concerning saving lives and growing the nation's economy with a view to flushing out substandard and unwholesome imported products were the crux of discourse. Let's tell ourselves the truth. This country cannot survive if we continue bringing substandard goods into the country. Because 
The problem is, when you bring substandard goods into the country, you sell them, our local factories, our local industries are destroyed gradually. Most of you here that are importing uh, items and you're helping importing, you have the ability to start locally producing your goods in this country. Promoting growth understanding and collaboration between relevant agencies towards enhancing compliance to rules guiding the business of importation without breach of contract, stakeholders in their paper presentation pointed as crucial to trade facilitation. We should not be involved in dishonesty in our declaration. Such as consumers, inaccurate description of import and let in order to circumvent the procedure which are all impediments to achieving things of new business. Described as a major player in the industry in view of their mode of business transactions at the seaport, the need for operators to strictly adhere to zero tolerance of an awesome product smuggled into the country was agreed upon as a way out of the quagmire. In Lagos, Abolade Salami, NTA News. That was an unsolved importation of substandard goods by Abolade Salami. Well, do not forget to follow this news broadcast live on our website at nta.ng slash live and our other social media handles displayed on your screen for updates. We shall pause here again for some messages. Network news will continue when we return. Welcome back. Let's talk electoral matters. Following the high number of invalid registrations recorded in the ongoing continuous voters registration exercise, INEC Chairman Professor Mahmoud Yakubu is appealing to political parties to sensitize their members on those qualified for the exercise. The appeal was made at a media briefing at the INEC headquarters, Abuja. If you have registered in the past, you should not get involved in the CVR again unless you have had problems with your PVC or fingerprint recognition during accreditation in any previous election. In that case, all you need to do is to revalidate your registration by visiting a designated registration center to recapture your fingerprints and picture. Other registered persons who may also get involved in the CVR are those whose PVCs are missing or defaced, those whose details need correction, and those seeking to transfer from their current places of voting to other locations. These cases do not involve new registration. Apart from this, the CVR is essentially for Nigerians who have attained the age of 18 years and have not registered earlier. Following the incident in Imo State in which an INEX staff was killed by gunmen in Ihete Uboma local government area, the commission has restricted the continuous voters' registration to only the state and local government offices. Meanwhile, INEC has established contact with two of the staff missing after yesterday's attack in Ihete Uboma. They are safe and will soon be reunited with their families. INEC National Commissioner for Information, Festus Okoye, confirmed. Time now to join Suleiman, with, who has a new set of reports on network news. Hello, Suleiman. Thank you, Jumai, and welcome to Kaduna. In line with President Muhammad Buhari's compassion for the needy, a political pressure group known as Babo Buhari for All has flagged off distribution of food items to 25,000 poor in Kaduna. The exercise is to complement the directive of President Muhammad Buhari to the Federal Ministry of Agriculture to release 40,000 metric tons of grains for distribution to people. Haruna Muhammad reports. Babo Buhari for All Organization has provided 25,000 bags of rice for free distribution to support the position of President Buhari in poverty alleviation among poor and vulnerable. The gesture is designed to bring succor to the people in Kaduna. But I appreciate so much in as much as I am praying for Babo Buhari to end up well and uh, to end his government well. Alhamdulillah, we are very grateful to receive this palliative from Baba Buhari for all. Long live Nigeria, long live Baba Buhari. The distribution exercise conducted by the National Coordinator Buhari for All, Aminu Sani judges stressed the need for assisting the needy. 
while commending President Buhari for the release of 40,000 metric tons of grains from the nation's strategic grains reserve, Aminu Jaji said it portrays the president as a compassionate leader. The challenges faced by especially the Nigerian masses due to so many reasons. That is why this organization decided to come up with this uh, policy of distribution put items uh, in this uh, holy month of Ramadan. Even though it is not only in the Ramadan period, we did it uh, time to time. Yeah. The organization said it will continue to sustain the gesture in the spirit of poverty alleviation. Haruna Mohammed, NTA News. Federal government's agenda of addressing housing deficit in Nigeria is coming to fruition with the inauguration of additional 76 units under the first phase of the federal housing program in Dusi, the Jigao state, ca state capital. Mohamed Askero reports that Minister of Water Resources, Suleiman Adamu, leads in the inauguration on behalf of President Muhammad Buhari. One of the progressive ideals of the present administration is to improve the living condition of Nigerians. These housing units of one two and three bedrooms experts believe reflect that ideal given the quality and design of the housing units with network of roads drainages water and electricity supply now available to accommodate more nigerians awarded in november 2016 the housing construction with the needed infrastructure cost the federal government close to 1.7 billion naira our desire and commitment towards improving the human condition and our message of change have another facet beyond job creation. While we welcome those who can afford to pay outright, it is not a condition for eligibility, and we have offered flexible payment options like mortgages and rent and rent to own, which we encourage applicants to pursue. Other speakers have commended the federal government for addressing the nation's housing deficit through its national housing program. The National Housing Program Phase 1 we are about to commission today is part of the change development agenda initiated by Mr. President aimed at providing affordable housing to Nigerian citizens. The deliberate effort to address housing deficit by the federal government is certainly worthy of commendation. Jigawa is one of the 34 benefiting states with the second phase being executed in Brunikudu local government area. From Dutsi, Muhammad Askira, NTA News. More reports ahead with Jume after the break. Hey, welcome back. President Muhammadu Buhari warmly felicitates with scholar, administrator and journalist Dr. Yemi Ogumbi on his 75th birthday, joining family, friends and associates to rejoice with him on his many achievements, especially in the media and literary world. President Buhari congratulates Dr. Ogumbi on the milestone, rejoicing with the leading light who had served variously as managing director of the Guardian Books and the Daily Times of Nigeria. President Buhari joins the Nigerian Union of Journalists, Nigeria Guild of Editors and Newspapers Proprietors Association of Nigeria in rejoicing with Dr. Ogumbi, whose legacy of goodwill in service continue to speak. The president prays for Dr. Ogumbi's good health, strength and longer life. Minister of Information and Culture, Laya Mohammed, has condoled with the family, friends and fans of the late high-life musician Julius Aremu Olusaya Ekemodo, popularly known as Orlando Julius, saying his death robs the music industry of another trailblazing legend and the nation of another giant star. In a statement, the minister described the late Orlando Julius as an all-rounder in his field, noting that he made his mark as a singer, songwriter, saxophonist, and performer. He said despite a legend-in-life image, he remained a decent gentleman and a good family man. His passion for music was unparalleled, hence he excelled in his chosen field. Orlando Award, he added, by dint of hard work, he and others like him laid the foundation and helped to nurture Afrobeat to global prominence. It is most fitting that he lived long enough to witness the moment in which Nigerian music has taken the world by storm. Laya Mohammed urged the family of the late music legend to take solace in the good and remarkable life of their patriarch and prayed for the repose of the soul of the departed. Let's now join our sports decks for the latest in the world of sports.
Sim Bayosa has emerged winners of the first National Para Games, which held at the Moshud Abiola National Stadium, Abuja, with a total of 93 medals comprising 31 gold, 30 silver, and 32 bronze. Team Oyo State is second with 24 gold, 15 silver and 21 bronze, while Team Kano came third with a total of 42 medals. A country is known by how well you treat your most vulnerable population. Bayelsa treats its special athletes very well, and you can see that by the results here. And it's for us, the athletes, to go and work harder for better win. They have been making us proud for the past years. They've, where we come home with sorrows, with the able people, they come home with a lot of medal to make we proud, at, at least to show or showcase us. 15 sporting events were competed for in the week-long event with 21 states participating. Moving on to football, ahead of the third round of the FIFA Under-17 Women's World Cup qualifiers, head coach of Nigeria's Flamingos, Bankole Oluwokere, has declared the readiness of the team to face their counterparts from Egypt. 20 players have been selected, including two goalkeepers, seven defenders, 11 midfielders, four midfielders and seven strikers. Uh, like uh, one or two uh, training sections to I mean, play with uh, some uh, finishing touches to our uh, program. Whereas I'm telling to you, we are, we are almost ready. To... Meanwhile, the Egyptian delegation, which arrived at Abuja Thursday, will have their first field of the Moshud Abiola National Stadium on Saturday, ahead of the clash on Sunday with the return leg in Cairo come April 30. Still on football, Nigeria's Flying Eagles have been drawn in Group B alongside Ghana and Burkina Faso ahead of Wafu B Under-20 Championship in Miami, Niger Republic from May 7 to 20. The seven-team championship serves as qualifiers for Under-20 Africa Cup of Nations in 2023 with sports update Ayodeji, Makinde NTA News. And that's it on Network News tonight. But before we go, don't forget to join us in the fight against rape and rapist. I am Dumma Yusuf. Have a blessed Easter celebration. Thank <laughs> you.